Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another MacBook Vectorworks testing video. Now today we're going to be looking at testing Vectorworks on my brand new MacBook M1 Pro and it's going to be pretty exciting I can assure you so do make sure you stay to the end of the video. Um, just to remind you that if you're not on Vectorworks 2022 which is Mac M1 native it might be worth upgrading and um, we've actually got 40% off at the moment in the Vectorworks seller in the UK so please let me know I can certainly give you at least 10 or 20 reasons why you should upgrade to 2022 it's absolutely awesome but that big one uh, it runs Mac native on Apple Silicon is a good one. So the 40% off will help too. Now just one more favour to ask you, um, I've also been nominated for three awards at this year's Computing Construction Awards, going to London for the big event on November the 11th and I'm hopeful I would love to just do well in those awards. So please, please, if you're a fan of my uh, videos, please vote for me uh, to be Channel Partner of the Year at the Vectorworks uh, Computing Construction Awards. What I'm going to do is put the link in the description. All you need to do is pop on and vote and we'll be very, very grateful. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Bye bye. Okay, so let's get started with the test of Vectorworks running natively on my new MacBook M1 Pro. Um, here you can see a project that I've been working on for a while. It's for a new eco home and I just managed to get planning permission for this project, which I'm very chuffed about. But more importantly, you can see it's running pretty fast on the M1 Pro so far. So what I'm going to do is basically just kind of pop in and turn the other layers on. So you can see it's a three layered model, a ground floor, first floor and a roof layer. And basically so far you can see when I'm spinning around the model, uh, there's a very high frame rate and it feels really good. So now we're just sort of testing with the lighting, the heliodons on and off to see how that feels as well. Let's have a quick look at the ambient occlusion. Um, ambient occlusion is a nice little setting that gives a bit more depth to the sort of shadows and things like the corners. Uh, normally with ambient occlusion that will slow things down quite a bit, so you wouldn't tend to model with that on, but it does look good in the visuals. Uh, but with the new Mac M1 Pro, it looks like I'll be able to kind of model with that on no problem. Okay, so the next test I want to do is cutting a section with the clip cube. And my first impression of this is you can see it's really, really smooth. Let's go ahead and just right click and cut this section onto a sheet. Um, let's call that 01 sections. And we'll just kind of click OK, and see how long it takes to process. So sections on a, a relatively sort of complex model like this can take a few seconds, but that was quick, wow. That seemed really fast. Now they can take quite a bit of time um, because these are done in hidden line as you can see. So I'm just gonna blow this section up. I'm also gonna go into the advanced properties and turn on the detail that's within the model. And finally, I'm just gonna do one more little setting. I'm just gonna kind of pop it over there. Let's just pop it into perspective mode and we'll click update and watch how fast this is. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten seconds. That's very, very respectable. Um, so no problem at all with the speed there. Now when I was working on this on my old MacBook, um, you know, I can definitely tell you it was way slower than this. I haven't done any quantitative testing, but we will be doing that in a minute with some rendering testing on another project. So next up, let's go and just create a normal sheet layer with a rendered viewport and let's just pop that down to uh, settings. Let's go into the settings and make that 300 DPI. Now when you're working on Vectorworks, you really don't want to render at 300 DPI all the time, um, apart from the final renders. You really want to be working at probably 150, maybe 200, just to get a good impression of the quality there. So you see, I've already clicked update. Down in the bottom corner, the geometry is processing and boom, it's done already. Um, it's almost instant. So really, really fast when you're working with the OpenGL. Um, I'm just gonna duplicate the viewport now. Now we're gonna change the render style to, um, I think let's go for final quality. And again, I don't use final quality that often, but let's go for it. I'm interested to see how long this will take because final quality is a CPU process. And if you look up at the top there, it's just starting the initial processing. Have a look at my little kind of gadget up here. These are my processors. You can see they're pretty much maxing out, um, so 90 odd percent. Uh, the GPU is not doing huge amounts and there's no memory problems at all. Um, I've gone for the 16 gigabyte M1 Pro model. 
I kind of figured that my old model was 16 gig and I rarely ran out of memory. I'd, I very rarely had memory problems. So I thought rather than uh, spend a fortune on the extra 32 gigabytes of memory that Apple do charge, um, I would just give it a go and see how we go. Now, so far, so good. The other nice thing with um, the Final Quality Renderworks now on 2022 is you'll notice that I'm just basically back on the design layer and I can carry on working on my project. And if you look carefully, down in the bottom right corner is a little teapot spinning away. Um, and the teapot's one of these icons that's always been associated with rendering, if you're wondering why it's always a teapot. Now, the teapot's spinning away, and that basically means I can carry on working on my project as I want to. When I'm ready, I can just pop back onto the sheet layer, double click, and you can see it's almost finished, and it will just carry on updating. So this sort of background rendering, uh, Vectorworks officially call it non-blocking, is a new sort of thing that they've added to the later versions of Vectorworks. With Vectorworks 2022, we've now got non-blocking rendering, not just for uh, final quality renderworks, but also hidden line. Now the time there, one minute 25, that's pretty awesome. Um, for that level of quality at 300 DPI, that's excellent. If I did want to, I could drop that down to say 150, 200, and you would find that every time you um, half the render DPI, you'll basically speed the rendering process up by a dramatic amount. So as I said, when I'm working, normally I'd render at low resolution to 150, 200. And really just for the final prints, I'll just go to 300. Um, so it would be a lot quicker than that normally as well. But I'll do a bit more demoing on rendering in another project to follow. Uh, so make sure you kind of stay to the end of the video to watch that. Okay, so what we're doing now is just doing a quick hidden line update. Um, in fact, sorry, this is a artistic render works. You can see a nice little sketchy style and it looks pretty cool. Now we're just going to go for the hidden line. Now hidden line is basically the slowest type of rendering and that's because it's CPU based not GPU based at all and it will basically take a bit longer but there is a lot of detail in here and um, things like those bits of furniture and all those things I could turn those off which would definitely save some render time but look, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. So let's go for it, let's select hidden line We'll click update and see how long this takes. So the hidden line renderings used to be blocking, which meant you could do nothing else while it was working. But now, once it starts processing, you'll see that I can actually click update and I can carry on. And notice again, I think a little teapot will appear once it's done the initial bit of processing. I think there's various uh, stages in the Vectorworks hidden line processing. And I'm not sure if all of them are multi-core, uh, but once it gets going, in a second, you will see the cores of my processor ramping up. You can see them now ramping up. And, well, actually it's done. <laughs> so it was hardly strained at all. And I can tell you that is very, very quick compared to my previous uh, laptop, which I've been working on for quite some time. So the testing is extremely nice so far. So what we'll do, we'll do a bit more 3D testing. Okay, so we're going to do a bit of testing on the new Mac M1 Pro on another project uh, on Vectorworks and see how this performs. So this is a project that I did a little while ago for a nice little kind of extension for um, a kitchen, contemporary kitchen extension. And you can see I've got a little project file with a few different sort of types of views. Okay, now this was actually done on my old MacBook Pro. Okay, but what I've actually got here, you'll see these were the old elevations here, looking really nice, just open GL renders. What I've done here, is made a nice little comparison for you. Okay, now here is the old render on the MacBook, um, previous MacBook generation here. It took about nine seconds, that's not too bad. And just so you can see, I'm not tricking you in any way, let's just pop this into wireframe. Let's just change this now back to a shaded view. So we'll go to wireframe to shaded, and we'll get ready to update. So get ready, it should take about three seconds, so count quickly, one, two, three. You can see it's basically three seconds. So let's have a look at the comparison on a little render like this, you know, three times faster. Now that might not seem much, um, but when you kind of add that up, if you're talking something that might take you 20 minutes, um, on the old MacBook, it was taking me an hour. Okay, so that's where it really stacks up, where you start to see big, big time differences. So here we can see um, a final quality rendering. Okay, final quality, let's just double check what that is. Um, okay, yeah, so we've got final quality render works. So again, let's just do a little test on this one. We'll just change that one back to wireframe. 
we'll zoom in a bit here and let's go to final quality render works. I think it's 200 dpi, yes it is. As I said before, that's what I normally render. So we'll click update. So what I'm keen to show you here is how quick it feels like it's rendering. Okay, so you can kind of get to a point quite rapidly where you can kind of begin to see if the lighting, things like reflections and materials are actually looking good. And if they're not, you can just click cancel. So you can just cancel the rendering and start again. But as I said a minute ago, now we've got the non-blocking rendering, you know, there's nothing to stop me going off to some other sheets, having a look around. I could even go back to the design layer. Okay, so you can see the rendering is now finished. Now on the old MacBook, it took five minutes 27. On the new one, one minute 40. So you can see that's uh, broadly, what is that, about three times quicker, maybe a bit less. So depending on the kind of rendering you're going to do, I think we're going to get some different results. So let's have a quick look at another one. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick look at this one. Um, <laughs> 15 seconds, and this one took two seconds. So that was very, very big improvement in terms of speed. And you're going to find that almost instant. Have a quick look at this one. This is what they call fast render work. So I'll just show you this one live in front of you. Uh, it's quite satisfying to watch, so we'll just change it to wireframe and we'll just go back to Fast Renderworks and we'll click Update. So Fast Renderworks is a pretty good choice um, in that it's quite sort of decent quality. You're still getting um, nice reflections and sort of lighting. You can see it's a lot more grainy than the other types of rendering, but that's okay because it's fast and it only really takes like 18 seconds. Um, so instead of taking, you know, 1.1 minutes, you're talking almost like five times faster, four or five times faster. So it makes a huge difference and the quality is pretty good. Um, so you can really kind of read the space and the quality. Don't worry about the graininess because you can eliminate that later. Now, Custom Renderworks is like the next level up. And I often use this to go from um, between final quality and fast. So all you need to do if you want custom renderworks is click custom renderworks, go into the settings. For example, here are my medium settings as well. Uh, let's just click update and see how that goes while we're talking about it. And um, the good thing is you can work, as I say, you can go and inspect some other visuals, do some other work over here. Let have a look at this one. By the time you come back, it will have progressed. So I've said this before, but the time to results, if you like, where you can actually see if the materials and the, um, the lighting is looking good, is quite rapid. So you can just abort the rendering if needed. Here's a little tip as well. If you go onto the viewports, um, you'll begin to notice a little icon down here. And this will, of course, be the viewport that is being currently rendered. So if you do want to see which viewport it is, I could name it if I wanted by right clicking and naming the viewport here. I could call this uh, kitchen view or something but you can see which one it is because they're unrendered and you can actually sort by that as well so when you're doing a big file you can sort by whether it's rendered or not of course it's finished now okay so let's carry on on our sheets now finally we're going to get down to the custom uh, render works with high settings now what you're going to see with the custom render works with high settings is the quality is very good and it's pretty much as good as final final quality so in some ways, having looked at the quality difference between custom and final, you may as well use um, either fast render works, I would say, or just go for final. Uh, or custom with medium settings will work well for you as well. Let me just show you this one. Um, so there's all sorts of artistic render styles that we come with Vectorworks these days. And some of these are quite fun to try. Again, let's just have a quick look. I'll do the update. So 1 minute 53 seconds on the old MacBook. Uh, the new one you can see absolutely ripping through it. Now I just want to bring across for a moment my processing. So I just want to show you what's going on behind the scenes. Okay, so if you do ever want to do this, you just need to pop down to your program activity monitor. Okay, normally the activity monitor will give you all sorts of statistics about your computer, energy usage, memory usage, all this sort of thing. So very, very detailed. But what I would like to show you is if you just go up to Window, you can pop open CPU usage um, and GPU usage as well. So this is actually quite useful just to keep an eye on while you're working. You can see if you're running out of memory and see what the issue is. Um, and I guess what I'm trying to show here is really my two efficiency cores are very busy doing their thing. Um, but my core performance cores not really doing that much, especially the ones 9 and 10 and 7 and 8. 
So, you know, the further you go down in the course, the less work they're doing. The GPU is been kept quite busy, and but that's because I've got quite a few other programs open in the background as well. If I quit those out, they'll be uh, reduced. But here you can see the processing power as well. Here's another artistic style. And you can see, I didn't benchmark the time on that one, but it only renders in sort of nine seconds. Now this sheet is really interesting. Um, let's move these uh, sort of processing bars across for a second. So what I've done here is a whole bunch of different tests. You can see um, I did 70D DPI on the old MacBook, OpenGL three seconds, three seconds, and so on. So you can really kind of see the benchmarking coming across um, and compare the two. Now I did it on 72 and everything was pretty fast, like literally it was all three or four seconds. So if I go onto the 300 DPI sheet, you get a bit more of an accurate comparison. Um, so for example, if I look here, Final Quality Renderworks, or Custom Renderworks, sorry, 3 minutes 19, and then on the new one, 51 seconds, so, you know, three and a half times quicker. Uh, for example, this one here, 3 minutes on Final Quality Renderworks, 54 seconds. So, as I've said before, 27 seconds for this hidden line on the new MacBook, 1 minute there. So, you know, some processes like Hidden Line are maybe twice as fast, two and a bit times quicker. Final quality rendering seems to be at least three, three and a half times faster, which in my view is quite a big deal and it makes a big, big difference. So this is a really handy file and um, maybe it's something that I'll share with you if uh, appropriate and you can do some testing of your own. But I do hope you enjoyed that initial sort of testing video and just seeing how Vectorworks performs. But I can tell you that I've been sort of starting to kind of use it now on a few more projects. What's really impressive is just the snappiness. Um, it just feels very responsive. You know, every, every time you sort of turn the layer on and off, it's just right there. Uh, things like the um, spinning around, super fast. Uh, I don't know whether I've got any save views. Yes, I have got a few save views in here. Just see how I can sort of jump to those save views. Super quick. Just jump to those. Really, really nice. Let's go back to that one. Uh, it's a section as well with the clip cubes. So that works really well. So my view is um, the new M1 Mac Pro processing has made my Vectorworks much, much faster than my previous laptop. And that was with an eGPU. So to be honest, those other render tests was with a Vega 64 eGPU plugged in. Um, so very interesting in that it's way, way faster than that. You can drive around in good frame rates, nice and smoothly. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been fun to make. And thanks very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next project and in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.